thanks for coming today. Um, obviously a really good day for um, a lot of different um, organisations to get their message out. I'm a little bit unique in the sense that I don't have, uh, I guess, an allegiance to a particular organisation, although um, Animals Australia have been working with for the last uh, 12 months. And I think they're a really good organisation um, on the basis that they're um, quite moderate and they're getting out there to a lot of people. Um, my background is um, I'm a professional class bodybuilder. I've been bodybuilding for about only four years now. Uh, in 2009, I actually won the, the Natural Universe uh, in Hollywood. So that was a competition um, against uh, other bodybuilders, whether they're vegan or vegetarian. As it happens, I've been uh, not eating meat for about 12 years. So it's a little bit of a unique, um, it, I guess, in, in particularly in my sport, um, which is stereotyped by people that consume large amounts of um, dairy and uh, meat and um, animal products. So it's a little bit unique, and the fact that I've been able to achieve in it has probably been, um, I guess, has captured a lot of notice uh, out there from people. So I guess what I wanted to talk about today was just um, some of the principles that I've used to to, to get to that um, level of competition and, and beyond that, and also just um, talk about um, some of the, the different aspects around uh, the sport that, and also about um, the way I'm using this as a, as a catalyst to uh, promote what I believe in, which is um, vegetarian veganism. So I'm just going to sit casually up here. I think we're all pretty. There we go. So. When I was a teenager, uh, I worked at a health food store and the, the common denominator that I, I picked up from everyone was they had heaps of energy and I sort of quizzed them about what it was that they were doing with their diet and lifestyle. Uh, I wasn't raised as a vegetarian or vegan, so uh, I listened to what, what they were doing with themselves and, and that was pretty common across the board. So as a teenager, I decided to take on that lifestyle and it was a little bit difficult uh, with uh, my parents not being uh, accepting of that uh, to a degree, so I just sort of learned to do it quite on my own. Um, and I, I was heavily into, into martial arts, so it was very conducive um, lifestyle because you, you're spending a lot of energy, so it was a really good diet for me to, to keep my weight down and to, um, to excel at that sport. At about uh, 26 years old, I decided to uh, get into the weights because I was, I was sick of uh, being injured uh, with uh, the martial arts that I was doing. And I was sort of told by people that I was never going to be a bodybuilder and I think that probably the worst thing they could have done was tell me that I couldn't do something. So I, I stepped on stage in 2007 for the first time and then within uh, two years after that I'd actually um, travelled uh, to America and, and won the Natural Universe. I don't want pro card. Um, out of Australia I've, I was the quickest uh, out of any of the bodybuilders that are professional class to do that. and. In the space of only a few years, I put on like 25 kilos. So uh, what I was doing was working, and a lot of people have come to me and said, "How are you using a, a vegan diet or vegetarian diet to excel at, at a sport that's typically um, associated with with eating uh, a lot of meat?" So I, I think bodybuilding, uh, like one of the big questions, was why bodybuilding? It's it's a little bit of a I, I think a selfish pursuit. Like I'm I'm not. Um, I guess afraid to admit that it's something that you do because you, um, you know, you want to better yourself. But I, I see it as a bit of a metaphor for life. It's it's a sport that allows you to to learn to to turn inwards to solve some of your your problems by um, hard work and discipline and ethics, and then apply those to, to other areas. So body, bodybuilding for me is just a lifestyle that enables me to do more in other areas of my life. Probably my biggest motivating factor. Um, because I had a bit of a conflict of interest, I thought it was a bit of a selfish sport. Like, I'm not really into to looking in the mirror and going, "Wow, I look fantastic," and trying to look better than someone else. So, for me, the the, the greater purpose behind it was I, I strongly believe in uh, vegetarianism and, and veganism. Uh, I think that when you look at all the different aspects of it, uh, whether it's morally, ethically, uh, spiritually, economically, there's so and nutritionally, there's so many reasons why it's such a fantastic lifestyle. And particularly now, when we're so disconnected from the way our food is produced, I think that there's um, a lot of merit in um, you know spreading the, the message of, as, as to why it's a good lifestyle to live. So for me, I thought the biggest way I could spread that message was to choose a sport, and, and bodybuilding 
is it that is completely contradictory to what a vegan or vegetarian is supposed to be like and excel at it and then people will probably listen so by leading by example and uh, succeeding at it a lot of people are more open to, to hearing about it so I've never been one to, to sort of preach to people I've been more about just just showing them and if they ask questions then I'd I'd be happy to share it with them and um, with the results I've been getting a lot of people are, are, have really been accepting of it and, and not just people um, to become vegetarians or vegans sometimes it's just to uh, take on some of the habits as well which I think is really positive so they haven't um, completely gone uh, you know to, to being vegetarian or vegan but just even adopting some of the habits is, is helping having a, a smaller effect as well so on the environment and on other animals and, and that sort of thing so I've, I've learned to uh, I guess take the diet and, and tweak it a little bit to to suit a bodybuilding lifestyle and um, some of the people in the room have probably like I know Julie um, I've got a website that I run and I send information out there and um, so I've been able to adapt a lot of their diet to, to really uh, appropriately uh, suit a bodybuilder uh, which is pretty unique and I, I, through that I've been able to help a lot of other people so um, I give the information out for free and um, I think that that's probably the best thing is you, you, you shouldn't um, just keep information, you should share it with other people and I also do custom diets for people so I get right into it and work with them uh, to help them exceed in, in, in bodybuilding uh, specifically as well. So for me, um, body, bodybuilding is really just a platform uh, to get a, a stronger message out there and by having that purpose behind it, I actually feel a lot better about uh, why I'm doing it. So I'm not that vain. So there's, there's only so much you can you can do in life that you know for yourself, but ultimately you want to help others or help other uh, have a cause behind you. So uh, that's for me the greater purpose as to why I'm, I'm still a bodybuilder and, and why I'm doing it as a vegan. Part of the uh, the other initiatives that I've, I've come up with, um, I'm releasing a, a vegan protein powder. So one of the, the biggest um, items that the bodybuilders consume is protein and it, it comes from dairy and there's obviously huge ramifications uh, for the health and also uh, other animals so uh, we've, we've been working with the manufacturer on the Gold Coast and also in Utah and we've come up with a, a really quality um, protein powder that's derived, it's non-soy, it's non-dairy. Uh, I'd love to have had some here today for you to sample but we're still um, still betting down the flavouring. I, I want to make sure that um, if it's got my name on it, then it, it's um, of really good quality. And that comes out in about a month, so i um, be really excited to, to share with you. If, if you want to know more. Um, the, the website? Yeah. So the, my, I've, if you join uh, vegetarianbodybuilding.org, at the moment, uh, that's, that's where you put your email in and you'll get a bunch of free videos just about um, you know, some training tips and, and uh, diet tips. And that's the best way for me to identify you because then I've got your email and I can let you know when the protein comes out. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, vegetarianbodybuilding.org. Yeah. <laughs> the protein is VXS, so v-xs.com, the, the website's being built. So for, for me, the, the, the biggest reason uh, we're doing that is there's a really strong need uh, out there in the market. There are some other uh, protein powders out there that are plant-based, but there's, I guess, not a, a, a legitimate um, figurehead behind them. And so I, I sort of see myself as getting the results that I've been getting and succeeding in competitions as being able to, to talk to um, the, the other side of the market, which is your, your um, people that consume dairy at the moment, and see if a lot of them are open to um, trying something different that's better for them, better for the environment. And also, um, you know, I think um, ultimately it tastes really good as well. So, uh, thanks, Sal. <laughs> I appreciate the questions actually, because I had a bunch of slides, so I'm like trying to think off the top of my head what I had. But... Sorry, when you talk about uh, flavoring, what are you talking about? Chocolate, blah, 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 three flavors every time. Yeah, we want to get creative. Um, with the flavors, so chocolate, chocolate and vanilla are the two obvious ones. We've got to come out with cookies and cream. All right, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry, there. Some people who use protein that's already there. Yeah, I'm a peanut butter fan myself. So, but with the, with the protein, like I, I view it as just a supplement. Ultimately, the best uh, 
source of nutrition is um, from, from whole foods as well. It is from whole foods, but um, you can only take so much protein powder in a day. So I look at uh, the other side of things as well with my website is um, talking about some of the quality foods that are, that are plant-based that you can use as a bodybuilder, so lentils and chickpeas and tofu and nuts and seeds and all that sort of stuff. So, um, which are all really health promoting. So a lot of people say to me, you know, you're not eating meat. And, and I say, well, look what, I, look what I'm eating in replace of it. So I'm eating, you know, all the very best of foods. Um, that, you know, so much, so much better health-wise for me as well. And they still fuel me as a bodybuilder. So, uh, yeah. hello. Soy um, gets a bit of a bad rap because of the, the isoflavins there as well. Uh, I guess soy is also one of those foods that, that's going down the GM track, so it'd be very hard for me to, to I guess, quality, quality control that aspect. So um, I'm a big fan of soy, like I have tofu and tempeh, uh, but you probably get enough soy from the, the rest of the foods that I'm eating in a day. So, um, and yeah, some people are uh, allergic to it as well. So. Um, it's probably something that we prefer to avoid. Particularly, there's other really good sources out there, so uh, they've, ex they've been able to really extract the protein now from um, some good whole food sources. So, example, you can get alfalfa protein now, you can get artichoke protein, you can get some really obscure um, vegetable sources of protein. So what we've done is we've, um, and by the way, this is not a protein plug session, so you know, feel free to ask me anything else, I'm not here to, to sell anything. Um, but the, um, we, we've aligned mother's milk amino acid profile and we've really worked to get ours uh, pretty close to that, which is what we're designed to consume. Uh, we're not really cows. So, uh, <laughs> so we, and, and the, the um, availability of, the, the bioavailability, so the way your body uh, digests it is so much more efficient than, than dairy as well. Uh, so we've just used the different sources of vegetable proteins, excluding soy uh, and gluten as well. Uh, to get it right, and it's um, it's raw, it's organic, which is what I believe in as well. So I sort of see it like a yin and yang. I, I believe in the the whole foods raw movement, but also there's a lot of science behind bodybuilding nutrition as well. Raw, so um, unheated. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we've been working really hard to to get it right, and it's taken a few goes at it. So. Um, it's just sourcing the product uh, has been the most difficult part. We know it's out there, but it's getting it in and getting it shipped and then getting it cleared through customs and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we're pretty close to it. But we, we want to make sure that uh, we can always get that product as well. So we can, there's some really, you know, uh, random sources out there that I'd love to put in it, but I just don't know if I'd ever get them again. Will they be available? So, yeah, so that comes out soon. Yeah, no, I cook it all the time. Uh, I, I live with this guy here, and we've got a deal. Master Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I clean plates. Yeah, I cook, he cleans. Uh, I clean. I cook about uh, between 10 to 12 meals at a time. So I just, just cook a big pot of quinoa, uh, the lentils, chickpeas, nuts, and, and we just literally put it all in, and that's the week's meals. Uh, prepared. Well, actually, with the two of us now, it lasts half the time. So I used to be able to cook and it lasts me a whole week and now for some reason it, by Wednesday it's all gone and I realise it's because he lives with me now. So <laughs> I'd actually love, I, I've been speaking to a, a company um, called Happy Tums, which I don't know if anyone's heard of them before. They produce um, whole foods uh, sold uh, to retailers that then you frozen meals if you like and um, I've gone to them with a few recipes and if the costing's right then I'd love just to pay them to cook the meals for me because I don't live at home with mum and I don't have a good woman at home as yet, so um, I'd love to be able to have um, someone cooking the foods for me, but I've had to do it myself and it's difficult as well when you're travelling, so I've had to get good at that. When I was travelling in the US from competition to competition, I had an uh, electric cooker in my bag and I had all the, the utensils and things that I needed and I'd just go to a Whole Foods market or a Trader Joe's over there, buy all the ingredients, cook them up and I'd get going. So it's the easiest way to control the quality as well. So I'm a bit fussy about what I eat and it's very specific, it's all measured. Because uh, when you're leading into a competition, you have to make sure that it, you know, virtually every calorie is counted because that way you can measure what's happening to your body at that point in time. So 
I'm out of competition at the moment. That's why I'm a little bit on the, you know, I love handles. <laughs> but um, leading up to a comp, it's pretty anal. You know, how, how much you have to be careful about what you eat. So, um, but I'm a big believer in all the superfoods when I'm getting, even when I'm getting ready for a competition. So I'll eat, still eat a handful of sprouts every day because I believe that you can find a balance between um, being really healthy and also the bodybuilding diet, which is not actually that healthy. Um, traditionally, it's just very bland, very standard, and there's probably a few gaps in the, in the nutritional aspect of it. So I'll make sure that I keep those covered with um, supplements as well. So. Successfully, there's definitely a better, uh, better way to do it, and you can do it as, as a vegan. You can probably—I I get about 150 grams of protein just out of whole foods a day, and then I supplement with about another 100 grams of uh, the vegan protein every day. So I'm getting about 250 grams of protein, which is more than you need, um, the average person needs. So as as a bodybuilder, that's about right for my body weight. So you definitely can do it, and you can keep the, the carbs. You can mit manipulate your carbs down. Um, everyone thinks carbs are the enemy, but they're not really. It's just um, high glycemic carbohydrates and poor quality carbs that are. Um, but certainly, um, tell them to find out a bit more about me. And you know, uh, even if it's just a shift in, in mindset that takes place, so you realise that there is someone out there doing it. Sometimes then, then that sort of opens the mind a little bit. And, um, you realise that um, it can be done and, and part of the, the health issues about the bodybuilding diet is the high acidity level so with, with vegan it's all uh, alkaline which is better for your energy production and, and um, your body's health uh, long term so um, I think it's a better way to do it and, and one of the slides I had was a, a competitive advantage so I actually see it as probably being an advantage I have over my competitors and I'll, I'll probably continue to be vindicated of the, over that over long term. So as I continue to compete and, and succeed, I think people will sort of sort of realise that maybe there is something to what I'm doing. So that's already happening to a degree. And it's up to me if I want to get that message out there um, is to keep succeeding and competing. Um, and I'm also doing uh, powerlifting, which is a strength-based sport. And that's something, again, that not many vegans are associated with doing well at. So, um, so I've chosen that as another avenue to sort of get that message out there that you can do it. So, um, yeah. I... <laughs> he has a bag in his fridge of egg whites. It's disgusting. Oh, that is disgusting. Look, I, I used to eat that stuff, and it's foul. Like, I, I honestly would gag if I, if I looked at it. And you've got to wonder, like, there's, there's, they're doing that as a means to an end, so just to get protein, but at what cost? And I think that if you can get your protein from a healthy source that's beneficial to your health, you're almost like, you know, um, twice, far more better off than, than if you went down that track. So, um, yeah, and, and then I guess um, the other aspect, if you obviously, um, if he's concerned about the environment or any of those other, you know, um, animal rights, no, no. So if he's some, someone like that, it might just resonate that it's better for his health and that there's a better way to do it, you know. And then, and then there's some people you can't change. So, or, you know, and then that's just it. And, you know, if it works for him, you know, that's that's his right. So um, it's a shame. But some people, that's just what they believe. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I've got two questions. Uh, one would be personal and one would be more towards your technical. That's what you believe. Yeah. Uh, I'll take the personal one first. So, 
people here have this myth that you are not a vegan when you become when you became what now what is it? Like sorry, when you want to miss the universe or something, it's a myth or is it the truth? Okay, so uh, I wasn't a vegan then; I was vegetarian. So okay, well, yeah, vegetarian. yeah, that's right. So I was vegetarian at that point for about ten years, and it, it was through lack of education. Like I really, I actually thought. Um, being vegetarian, and, and I only chose um, you know organic sources uh, for, for any uh, dairy products. It was, a, it was only until I became a little bit more aware. Uh, so once I won that competition, suddenly people were coming to me and saying, you know, this is fantastic. Vegetarians done this. Have you ever thought about being vegan, or what about being vegan? I thought, oh, you know, I'm not sure if that's that would work for me. And it's only been uh, since last year that I've been vegan. Um, but but at the time. Um, you know, my, my consumption of eggs was pretty limited because I, I just literally, I, there was one point where I was eating a lot of them, um, but then at that point I was eating very, it was very minimal. Um, I was just sort of gagging when I was eating them. I just, similar to how I meat used to make me feel back when I was a teenager. And um, the only dairy I was having was consumed the, the protein shakes. So, um, so that's correct, I was, I was only a vegetarian then, but now I'm vegan. Yeah, but I'm saying that when you use the supplements of whey protein, whatever that is, Use the supplements. That's indirectly related to animals. So, technically, you're not vegetarian or vegan when you want the competition. How do you? Is it thin line? You understand? Yeah, yeah. So I was veg veg vegetarian. So I was lacto-over vegetarian at that point. So I was uh, consuming uh, dairy products. Um, it was from a protein that was. It was from a 100% uh, recyclable, renewable. Um, it's called Reflex Nutrition. So I'm still featured on their website. Um, their, their protein is uh, from organically fed um, cows. So, so I felt I was doing the right thing, but, but you know, I've looked into how organic dairies, and I don't really agree with it, to be honest. So it was, but it was only through winning that at that point that I realised that after I got talking to a lot of people, that hang on, even even those choices aren't really in line with what my, my beliefs are. But um, I certainly have never, you know, consumed any any meat, fish, or anything for 12 years at that point. Um, but yeah, dairy was still a part. But you know, you know I, 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 as soon as I started to, to understand more um, from talking to like-minded people, that I realised that I, if I stood up for these things, how could I possibly, you know, be be consuming dairy? So, yeah. Second question is more technical. People who do bodybuilding know about this more. When you won the competition, do you think more weights, lifting more weights help or more reps? Or, like, you know, more weights or more reps? How do you bring your strength? I've been bodybuilding too. It's like okay. really hard to increase, like, you know? Yeah. Your body just doesn't take it. You keep constantly, you try to lift more. It's the, like, the chicken or the egg, like, I, I, I believe that um, bigger muscles are built through bigger weights, so ultimately you get stronger, you, your body's going to have to adapt to, uh, to deal with that. So I think, I think strength comes first, so heavier weights to, to get bigger muscles, and that's what I've done. So I've worked really hard, I've done, you know, to, to put on the amount of muscle I have in the short time and to continue doing so uh, is all about lifting heavy and um, lifting smart lifting with really good form and uh, working really, really hard. So I probably, I train, and, and some of the people that train in here aren't gonna like the sound of this, but you know, this is the advantage of being a vegan. I train for three, four hours a night, uh, you know, five, five nights a week. Yeah, so some people advocate going and doing the, doing a 45 minute session. Yeah, he really can, and he's been paying for it too. So uh, I train really hard and really long, but I, my body can deal with it and uh, I really enjoy it. And that's what I was looking for, a quick tip to increase. <laughs> no, a quick tip quick to increase your strength. <laughs> a quick tip, maybe. Quick, a, a quick tip? Whatever, success. Are you vegan? Sorry? Are you vegan? No, I'm vegetarian. Vegetarian? Just like you, yeah, I don't eat yeah. the meat. Yeah, cool. I'm not missing you as yet. Yeah. Um, I was going to say go vegan. Um, <laughs> the biggest tip is um, your biggest muscles in your body are your legs. So, you know, when, when you exercise, your body, the, the, the process that goes through after that is to uh, promote growth hormone and, and secrete all your, your testosterone, you regulate your body and then build muscle where you've just uh, completely destroyed it. 
if it's doing that in your biggest muscles, your body's going to the rest of your body's going to be a beneficiary of that. So you'll you'll continue to build a bigger body if you if you're doing big weights, which the most you can do it generally with your legs. So that's your that's your tip. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going, sir? Uh, my question is. How would your lifestyle have to change if you were to take that next step into the Olympia professional trainers? Sure. There's, there's two organisations, well, two federations, if you like. So there's the IFBB, uh, which is the, the guys that take the steroids, and they're massive. They're 300-pound guys, uh, and then they have the Mr. Olympia competition. I'm a part of the uh, IMBA, which is uh, the PMBA, uh, which has a, an Olympia as well, believe it or not and we all get drug tested, so uh, we get drug tested at that event. With the powerlifting I do, I get drug tested there. So I've chosen not to go down the route of taking uh, anabolic steroids. So I compete in the federation, but hopefully uh, everyone else uh, it, that is a part of it uh, does the right thing and doesn't take steroids. So if I had to go down that other path, I, I mean, it would be in complete contradiction to the lifestyle I'm sort of promoting and what I believe in. So, if, you know, if I was gonna go down that path, I may as well to start eating meat or something as well because it doesn't align with, with anything so um, you know I think also it's a bit of a freak show and it's the average person can't relate to it so even if I was to do that as a vegan I think most people just say well he's taking steroids so vegan or not whatever you know so for me to, to get a message out there I've had to do it naturally so then it's a bit more powerful to say that well he's done that and he's done it without steroids um, so I'll continue to compete in, in the federation that I'm in in, in America, there's a few other natural federations as well, so I'll be competing with those. And uh, they, they're big enough now because the average person can look at that and think, well, I can probably achieve that. Whereas, uh, unfortunately, the, the other guys, as you know, I suppose they, they practice the same sport, but it's almost a completely different outcome and, and different market and, and different people that, that um, relate to it. So I don't think I'll ever relate to them anyway. So it's kind of like wrestling, you know, the, it's a bit of a show, it's not really real or something, so, yeah. there you go. In, in creating protein powder smoothie, yeah. should you add it into the smoothie before you blend it, some other source of protein, like uh, crushed nuts or something like that? I'll give, okay, I'll tell you what, what ha happens for breakfast every morning in my house. Yeah. Make enough for him, and uh, it goes, actually, um, I have a girlfriend that, that said to me the other day, and she's, she was a staunch meat eater. I'm only just sort of started seeing her, and she's like, hit me up the next day and said, what was that that you made me for breakfast? Like, and everyone that has it loves it. So I agree, you put it other sources of protein. So I have uh, frozen berries, uh, frozen banana, co coconut cream, or coconut milk. So you get the organic cans um, of coconut uh, milk it is. So it's a bit thinner. I put in about a third of a can of that. I put in uh, protein powder, which is the vegan protein powder. I put in uh, cacao powder, maca powder, uh, molasses. Um, I put a herbal formula in there. What else do I think? Dates, oats. It's intense. You know, there's, there's uh, chia seeds, so your omega-3s, yeah. We're coming up with, with the protein company it's, um, that we've got, we're coming up with a whole food product as well. So we're doing like a chia, maca, so sort of a protein, but they're more a complete meal. So um, so super blend between uh, superfoods and also bodybuilding nutrition. So there's a big need for that as well. But it's killer, like it tastes really good. So, yeah, yeah. you got to go. Yeah. Cool. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry my slides didn't work out, but I'd rather actually answer questions for people anyway, because rather than just talking. So um, I'll just be outside. If you've got any other questions, just come and ask me. If there's anything I can do to help you guys um, with your own diet or nutrition or anything you want to know then or training, um, just hit me up. So I'll, I'll just hang around. So thanks for having me, everyone, and, and thanks for coming and listening.